if you have a difference of opinion, how do you resolve the issue? <laughs> this actually came up because the, uh, the company that runs King Crimson's Affairs and Our Affairs, Discipline Global Mobile, is owned exactly 50-50, the shares are. And every year we used to go and have a meeting with our accountants. And they stopped now, but every year they used to bring up the fact that they don't like a 50-50 share ownership because if we don't agree, the company would go into stasis. In other words, no one person has an overriding uh, opinion, which we pointed out was exactly the point. <laughs> because therefore we have to agree. I, I can't yes. remember the last time we disagreed on anything, David. I, I will tell a story about that, which was, I remember uh, it was an album of miniatures. Morgan Fisher. Wanted a, a one minute track from Robert. And I took, uh, I think it was an improvisation that he and Trey Gunn had done, which was longer, and I was busy editing it down, so it would be exactly one minute long. And Robert came visiting with some visitors who were visiting him at home, and they were walking through. And I remember standing behind me, the visitor asked Robert, how does David know what to do? And Robert's answer was, because David has perfect taste. <laughs> and afterwards I thought, it's a wonderful compliment. But possibly what it also means is that our two tastes have emerged, as in I've assimilated Robert's taste to an extent that I can edit something, and I know fairly reliably, if I have two choices, well, this is actually most likely the way that Robert would like it to go. So I think you merge over time, and I can't remember when we last had a disagreement. What I would say is this, if anyone is working together, it, for example, within a group context or within a business context, the key to this is, do we share the same aim? If we share the same aim, the possible is always possible, and often the impossible is possible too. However, if we're working together and we don't share the same aim, there's going to be problems. Now, within David and Robert, David and Robert share the same aims. You can go to DGM and see the DGM business aims. You can see the DGM principles of ethical business, which we share. However, let's move on to another situation. King Crimson. Now, Robert's first principle of King Crimson is the music comes first. Does anyone here feel this is unreasonable? Does anyone here think, actually, this is probably exactly what it should be? Yeah. <laughs> There's a few who have not yet <laughs> committed themselves. <laughs> so, the music comes first. Secondly, within the context of the group, the interests of the group come first, that is, ahead of the personal subjective interests of the members of the group. Is that also reasonable? So when the music comes first, the group comes first. So what do you do if you're working in a band with a person who thinks they're more important than everything else? How do you resolve that one? All right, here's another context within a group of four people. One thinks they're more important than everyone else. The other thinks it's all about them, and they're directing how the band plays. They are the sun within the crimson solar system, and the other players are planets in the orbit which they are directing. And this is a four-piece, and these are two contrasting viewpoints. How do you deal with that? This, for me, was day-to-day -day life in King Crimson. This is not imaginary stuff. So the answer would, to that one would be, in a group of four people, where the four people do not share the same aims, uh, if they are articulated, what do you do? Well, the answer is you keep playing music. You do not have a business meeting. <laughs> 